Let's start, please. Today, in the 23rd of Shawwal, we should continue with the concise presentation of the fiqh on page 290 on the zakah and livestock. Pay attention, everybody. Right, the livestock. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rahmatullah. As we have said before, the zakah is not due on everything. It is in due particular items, like we said, the gold and the silver, the money. And from the animals, it's not, there's no zakah on horses, even horses are much more than the sheep and the camels. But there is no zakah on horses, there's zakah on the following, that is, we said, if you remember, the camels and the likes, yes? What are the likes here, yeah, Tawban? Camels and the likes, anybody? Sheep and cows, sheep. cows, sheep. No, camels and the likes, what's the likes of the camels? Uh, other animals. Lama, Lama. 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 I said lamb, I didn't remember lamb then. And uh, I said the cows and the lights. What are the lights here? Buffalo. Buffaloes. I said that buffaloes, you know, bulls, buffaloes. And the sheep and the lights, well, I don't know if you know them, it's something called meh. Very nice sheep. Very big, and, you know. Yeah. They're like huge. They're huge sheep. Like they have hill and horns like that. Yes, that's the one. Okay, so these are the three items. From the cattle, there's no zakah on anything else. Even if you have 100 <laughs> cats, there's no zakah on cats. <laughs> like chickens. And there's no 100 chickens. There's no zakah on chickens. And rabbits. Uh, whatever. Okay, let's just go to the zakah of the camels now. Zakah on camels. Abu Sa'id al Qudri, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, the color is not due unless it's five camels. Okay, so anything below five camels is no zakat. All right, so the zakat is from five camels upwards. Let's see how much. The obligatory amount on camels. Please, can you pay attention? And it's for the Allah one, narrated when Abu Bakr Rodi Allah one sent me to collect the zakat from the province of Eastern Arabia. He gave me a writing which read, In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Here are the obligatory zakat payments which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prescribed on every Muslim and which Allah ordered his Messenger to observe. Therefore, any Muslim who is asked to pay zakat accordingly should pay for it, and pay it should pay it, and whoever is asked to give more than this is not to give it. For a flock of 24 camels or less, and on every five camels, one sheep is to be given as zakah. If the flock is between 25 and 35 camels, a one-year-old she-camel is to be given. If the herd is between 36 and 45 camels, a two-year-old she-camel is to be given. If the herd is between 46 and 60 camels, a three-year-old she-camel is to be given. If the flock is between 61 75 camels, a four year old she camel is to be given. If the total number of the flock is between 76 and 90 camels, two two year old she camels are to be given. If the number of the flock is between 91 and 120 camels, two three year old she camels are to be given. If the herd is over 120 camels, and every 40 camels, a two year old she camel is to be given. And on every 50 camels, a three-year-old she-camel is to be given. Whoever has only four camels owes nothing as a cow, but if the owner of these camels wants to give something, he may do so. If the number of camels is five, the owner has to give one sheep, cam one sheep as a cow. Right. <clears throat> First of all, this is to show you that Abu Bakr is detailing <coughs> for the person who's going to collect the zakat, how good? And this is for the governor of Bahrain. Bahrain is Bahrain, same one, which is next to Qatar. So Abu Bakr an is sending him the letter, and the letter starts with what? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So what do we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim now? Number one, in the Quran. And number two, when we send what? 
a letter for us a message whatsapp saying bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim there's no such thing saying bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim when you start the food what do you say when you start the food Amr? bismillah here he says to him this is the sadaqah to be collected and he's directing his words to the governor to the people so he who the Muslims have been asked is zakah accordingly, the book of the Sunnah, you should give it. And you have been asked for it, not according to the Quran and the Sunnah, then the person should not give it. So he's telling the people, if the governor asks you more than what is being specified here, don't give him. To give him only what is being specified. And that's a set rule from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Okay, we're going to draw a timetable here. And from that timetable, and that's why I said the sisters, they need to see the timetable. But never mind, if you have somebody... You know what I mean? Put it there, how are you going to see it? They said they're gonna, uh, they want me to fold the curtain up. So like, the bottom of it just... Okay, what up. you just need to do is just push that curtain to that side. I will put this board here. Can I ask for everybody to move a bit forward to the side, please? Yeah, turn. Right, I'm going to just uh, use... I'm going to use the board here and for everyone to look and even the sister can see that. Okay, right. Basically, the timetable you're going to be drawing everybody on your book or your copy book. You have to, otherwise you don't understand what is Abu, Abu Bakr is talking about. So we're going to be saying, this is... I think uh, we can't have a speaker in front of my mic. So you need to push it somewhere. Maybe... Yeah, I'm going to go to the other side, just put the speaker on the other side. Sorry. Is this yours? Uh, yeah. Put it closer. So you understand what is the animals are called here. Each animal has got a certain age, basically got a name. I'm going to give you as well what are these names mean. Okay? So from zero to four camels, how many is it can you? Nothing. Zero. Nothing. On five camels to twenty-four. Can you just use your book as well? Help, help yourself. From zero to twenty-four. Sorry, from five to twenty-four. We have one sheep. One sheep. It's a sheep for every five. Camels. So 
So it's, yeah, for here one. Okay, one sheep for every five camels. One sheep for every what? Five, five camels. From 25. Two, thirty-five. Okay, you can write exactly what I just say here. Bint, what? Machal. Bint Machal. DH represents the blood. KH represents the Kha. Bint Machal. And I'll tell you what is Bint Makhat. Inshallah, later on when I come, all these things, we'll give it to you. Bint Makhat basically is a she camel. She is one year old and she is entering in the second one. Basically, uh, uh, the, the mother of this, that Bint Makhat, the mother of that she camel, is she had entered in the time of pregnancy. So it's known to the Arab, Bint Makhat. I will tell you, so if you want to write later on what is these gear or thing, I will tell you, Charles. Okay, with Machat, after that, 36. To 45. You're not going to find these in a book. No Islamic book we're going to put like this, because this is maths. <laughs> okay? You're going to find them like just like this, which is not understandable, if you understand. It's not understandable. Okay, 36 to 45. Bint Labun. Bint Labun. L A B O N. What's a Bint Labun? Bint Labun basically, she's two years and entering the third year, and her mother became a milky. That means that she had given her baby, delivered her baby, and she's giving milk. So the Arabs, they know that. Bint Labun. So she's a daughter, which is, she is two years entering the third one. Her mother is giving milk. Okay. Now from 46 to... Anybody with the book? Tell me. What's the number? 60. To 60. Excellent. What do you give here? Three-year-old. Okay. Three-year-old. She's called Taruka. <laughs> I like that name, right? Taruka. Taruka. She is. No, it's not Taruka, I'm going to say. It's Taruka. It's Taruka, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Taruka. Taruka. Taruka is also called Hikka. Maybe funny is on the Arabic there. Hikka. Anything like this as well? Because it says here, there is a hikka taruka. Can you see that in Arabic? Is that in English? Does it say that? Hikka taruka? No? Doesn't mention that. So it's taruka. We call it taruka. Meaning she is three years old, like he said, entering the fourth one. And she is at the moment uh, ready to be ridden. Ready to be what? Ridden. Mahuka. Not mahuka. Taruka. Taruka ready to be ridden. Yeah, taruka, so tarak, tarak. And also she's ready for mating for the male as well. For both for riding and for also the male to mate with her. Taruka. So when she's three years old, she's an adult now. You know that? <laughs> okay. From 61 to 75. That's called Jada. Strong. Jada'a. Jada'a means four years old, entering the fifth, and the front teeth had fallen. That's how the camels are known. As soon as they perform the heels, they say, they fall in the front ones, that means she's, she's Jada'a. 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 Okay. 
Okay. From 76 to 90. Concentrate please. To Bint Labun. Now, Kalas, all the names have got them now. So the names are Bint Makhaf, Bint Labun, Taruk, Kajada. I'm not going to give you any more names. So you understand now? So if you understand each one, how much is that, then you will understand. So we said that is Bint Labun, Bint Makhaf, first one is one year old, entering the second. Bint Labun, two years old, entering the third. Taruk is three years old, entering the fourth. Jada is four years old, upwards. It's called Jada. Okay? Right, now two bit level. From 91 to 120, we have two taruka. From 121, Upwards, and this is the last number. Upwards, okay. For every every forty, bint lagoon. So every forty, there is one bint lagoon. Every forty, one bint lagoon. <coughs> every forty, I just put the capo out. One bint lagoon. And every 50 is one taruk. Now the math is going to be after this. Let me just use clever amounts here. Every 40 is bin labun, and every 50, one taruk. Okay, I have this now. Me and you are the same. Me and you are the same. I don't have any answers for my one going to ask. Okay, so I'm going to ask now. Anybody going to tell me? If I have a person and I collect zakah from someone and I found he's got 20 camels, what is his zakah? Put your finger up, please, if you know. 20, okay, camels. Follow. Four sheep. He said four sheep. Do you agree with him? Yeah. Yes. Because we said from zero, from 25 to 24 sheep, we got for every five camels, we've got one sheep. If you've got 20, that means divide 20 by 5, you've got 4. So what about what? 21. Shh, I'm asking four. him. Still 4. What about 22? Still 4. Still 4. What about 19? Three. 3. Well done. So 3, 19, 20 comes 4. Is that understood? Rahman, you understand that? Yeah. Okay, hopefully you do. Inshallah. So I've got now, this person is collecting the cap. This person has got, I'm going to give you an easy number yet. 42, yeah, Mr. Chef. 42. 42 camels. What's he got to pay? 42 is Bint Laboon. Bint Laboon. Yeah. Bint Laboon. So we know now. And let me just write for you as well. Here, so you understand what is Bint Laboon. So I'll just put here. What is each one? Bint Makhav. So I just put Bint Makhav. How many we said? One. Year old, okay? Entering the second. Entering what? Second. second. Bint. Laboon. How many? Three. Two to three. Two. 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 Entering the second. Yeah. Two year old. Okay. Bint. After that. What's your number? Taruka. 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 Three to four. Three going to four. Three. What was two? Is it three? Three. Yeah. One, two, there's three. Entering the four. Yeah, that's what you said. finished three. Taruka. And lastly, Jada? Four, 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 four and on. Okay. Four. Upwards. Four. Year old and upward. That's upward. Like this. Okay. Now, Alhamdulillah, is everybody clear about this? Okay. I'm a zakat collector and you're into to somebody, and this person has got. 205 camels. Please calculate for me. Shh. Shh. You got one person. He says four taruka. I agree with him. 
Ellie, as well? This is a question. So let's say that... Uh, no, 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 no. Don't, don't give me questions. <laughs> Have a read out. I've got 205 camels. He says, for Toruka. Anybody else? Come on, Abdus, mate. Uh, Abdullah, you know something else? Yeah, four, yeah. Two to one, yeah. Anybody else, come on? Five. Huh? Yes, go on. Five. Mr. You, you are a businessman, huh? Five big lagoon. Five big as well. So I could give four taroka <coughs> or five big lagoon. Because five big lagoon for every 40, there is big lagoon. Five multiply by four. You will follow us, Khadr. You follow me, Zuma? For every 40. So, okay, that's very good. You understand know what I'm saying? Well done. Well done. So either we give five taroka or four big lagoon. Sorry. Five, five big lagoon and four taroka because every 50 taroka. You follow me, Abdullah, you can look at somebody else. Still, you look at somebody else. <laughs> okay, I have got, I have got this person, he's got, okay, he's got 180. 180 camels. Yeah. Did you put the lovely beer until you know? I'm, I'm, I'm not guessing. Father. You're guessing now. You need to understand. You're guessing. 180. Please, can you just look what I just said there and further that? Not right. Not all. There's nothing. Just three taruka. Huh? Not right. No, it's three. I think you know it. Go on. Just three taruka. Yeah. Further. Look at the businessman now. 180. Go on. See, look at that. Two taruka, two big level. Very easy. Two taruka, 50 plus 50 is 100. Two big double, 40 plus 40 is 80. It's not really that much, much difficult. Do you understand that? Two taruka is 100. Two big level, what is 80? 180. Huh? It's like the playing the dots. 180. <laughs> <laughs> so if 180, okay, what about I've got 190? Put your finger up. I've got 190. Yalla. I've got this person's up. I'm going to give it to him. Go ahead. Uh, three taruka and one big lagoon. You see, look at that. Three taruka, which is 150, and one lagoon, and that's 40, 190. See? I knew that he knows, mashallah. So 190. Do you understand that, Dharma? Three multiplied by 50 is 150, and two 40s, that's okay, 140, that makes it 190. You understand that? I think your math is not really that good, is it? I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you you can mix them then. It's not just one that you, you can choose, like either um, taruka or bint You have to come to the number. You have to work it out to come to the number. Mm. All right. So 195, still the same thing. Yeah. Okay. You have to make the number. Okay. I've got quickly 210. Four bint uh, Four bint No. Yeah. Yeah, four. 210, yes. Four taruka, I think it is. 210. Four. Uh, no, no. Uh, four, four taruka and one uh, sheep. 210. Two sheep. Two sheep. Two sheep. Uh, two sheep. No, there's no sheep. There's no sheep in this because you have to work out in this. Above 121, this is the equation. 210. Yeah. Uh, get your sisters. Three of each. Three of each. Three of each. Oh, right. Like 120 plus 150, that's 200 and no, it's more than that. Oh. Only 210 I want. Yes. Four bits level and one taruka. Correct. Four bit level and one taruka. Why? Four bit level, four multiplied by 40, that's 160. Yeah. One taruka is 50, makes it 210. Did you understand what he said? I don't know if you understood it or not. Yeah, 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 yeah. He says four bit level, that's four multiplied by 40. And one taruka, which is one multiplied by 50. And that's 210. Because I didn't see you doing anything, come on. You understand what we're talking about? Okay. It's simple, by the way. It's very simple. Very simple. I think your maths are rusty, that's all. All right. Uh, I'm, to be fair, I'm a mathematician, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Okay, any job. Let's just go now to the uh, uh, cows. Okay, let's do the cows.
I'm going to take this out. Can I take this out? Okay. Rahman. I don't hear you saying anything. It takes, it takes maths. some time to... It's maths, uh, <laughs> Rust and Bob. Really? Rust and Bob. So much to you? Rust and Bob. When you talk about maths, Mons and Jumble comes in. <laughs> After 121 camels, it's a working out. The multiples are 40s and 50. Do you understand that? That's all. So if I give you 400 camels, you've got about five ways to arrive to the conclusion. It's not just four taruka or five bin tlamud. You can really add as well. Do you understand that? You could do okay, the 400. This is really uh, stable. Okay, read the cows, please, Abdullah. Thank you, book. Cows are simple, by the way. <laughs> I'm not talking about the cows, it's a cat and the cows. It's a cow and cattle. Yeah. And the sub and the obligatory amount. Mu'adi bin Jabir, the Allah Ran said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent me to Yemen and he told me to take from every 40 cattle one young two-year-old cow and every 30 a young bull or a young cow is to be taken. That's it. So the equation is, okay, from for every 30 and from every 40. So, 0 to 29, how much? Nothing. Nothing. Okay? Hamukallah. From 30 upwards, every 30, you're going to put names by the way, okay? So every 30, Tabiya. Tabiya. What is a Tabiya? I'm going to give you the now. And every 40, Musinna. Musinna. Tabi'a. I'm going to just put you what is Tabi'a on the expression. Tabi'a is a cow which is one year old and down to the two years. Okay? And Musinna is two years old upwards. Okay? So it's one year. Uh, this is uh, just below the two years. Just enter the second year. This one finished two years and upwards. Does it matter whether it's a, a female cow or, or it doesn't it? matter. Tabir or tabia. Correct. So this one is not like the camels. This is tabi male or female. Male or female. Very well question, very well done. Not like you could have a calf, okay, a bull. But the other one is what? She camels. Like. Yalla Abdul Rahman, I'm gonna give you one. See? Simple man! <laughs> no rusted. 35 cows I've got. How much should I pay? Tell me, Tabiya, Sinna. 35. I know you know, Mr. Chef. Yalla. I've got 35. You know, you say 30 upwards for every 30, you give a tabiyah, and every 40, you give a musinna. I've got 35. Tabiyah, simple. One tabiyah, I'm going to make khalas. You don't need that maths. Okay. I have 220. Yeah, put your finger up and then I'll ask. No, don't, you have to work it out. If you do it like this quickly, I don't think you're going to get it. Follow it. He says three Muslim men. 120. Three Muslim men. You're right. How do you know that? Because three multiplied by 40 is three Muslim men. 120, three Muslim men. Very well done. I couldn't. MashaAllah. I was going to prove that you're wrong, but MashaAllah, you proved me wrong. Three Muslim men. What else I could give as well? Come on. Yes, Omar. Four Tabir. 
So you must say that three multiplied by four is 120, or four multiplied by four multiplied by 30 is 120. Do you understand that, everybody? I hope that you do. I hope that you do. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Alhamdulillah. I have 210. Not 220. I have what? 210. Father. Five Muslims. Oh, five Muslims actually gives you 200. It's 200 divided by 40. That's what I should be saying. I said 210. 210. Yeah. Yeah. But five Muslims is 200, ya Habibi. No, 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 no. You're not right. It isn't like this. It's not like that. Okay. You have to get it right now. Seven to be here? Exactly. Seven multiplied by 30. So 110. Do you understand that? So multiple of 30s and 40s. So 7 tabiyah, 7 multiplied by 30, 210. Can anybody mix it? It's something else? 210? No. Yeah. Can you? Can't. Make sure. Four, Come on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So can, can we make this? He said here, 7 tabiyah, 7 multiplied by 30, that's 210. Can I get something else to make it 210? Father. Let me do Erdogan. Yeah. Erdogan. Thank you. <laughs> uh, four tabir. Four tabir? And two musim. But if you have four tabir and two musim, you get what? Uh, yes, 240, isn't it? 200, no. Yes, yeah, 210, I want. 210, 20. Uh, six tabir. Six tabir. Uh, it doesn't work. Yes. Three, three of each. Uh, three of each. So, six if you one. put, hang on, three of each. 90 plus 120, 210. Well done! See? Three Musimna. Well done, Ahmed. Is that Ahmed? Yes. Yeah. Hamza. Hamza, well done. And three Tabia. Why? Because three Muslims is multiplied by 40. That's equal to 120. And this is multiplied by 30 is equal 90, which makes it 210. You see? <laughs> He's the best in maths. Mr. <laughs> <the> businessman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everybody got the side table? Yes? Yeah. Right, let's just go to the sheep now. Sheep is very, very easy. It's the easiest one. <laughs> as I said, you're not going to find these side tables in a book. So you might as well put them like that and. It might be Monday, Monday, inshallah, you're going to be working as a zakat collector. I might employ you in the Islamic countries. <laughs> okay. Please read the sheep. Follow. The zakah on sheep and goat, the nisab, and the abuzid the amount. And it's for the Allah one, narrate, narrated that Abu Bakr the Allah one, but for him, the obligatory zakah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obligated upon his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The instruction included concerning the zakah when a freely grazing herd of sheep or goats. If it is between 40 and 100, and 20 sheep or goat, one sheep or goat is required as zakah. If the herd of sheep or goats is between 100, 20, and 200 sheep, two sheep or zakah to be given. If the number of sheep or goat is between 200 and 300 sheep or goat, three sheep or goats are to be given. And on every extra 100 sheep or goat, one sheep or goat is to be given as zakah. If somebody has less, then 40 freely grazing sheep or goat, no zakah is required from him, but if he wants to give something, he may do so. Okay, let's draw the timetable. Timetable is only one, two, three, four numbers, that's all. Okay, the sheep, so we've got number of sheep. And 
закарил. Okay. From one. Anybody can give me the first number? Yes. Zero. No zero. From one. Look, can't have zero. Start the sheep. From one. Zero is gonna be zero. One. Yeah. From one. To thirty. To thirty-nine. Remember that. What's that? B zero. So nothing. No zakat. Correct. That's the first number. Give me anybody give me a second number, please. From the book. So I said 40. So 120. How many? Two. Oh. One. One sheep or both. I'm gonna employ you, I'm not too much. <laughs> One sheep. Regardless, male or female. Okay. Okay, after that, please, that third number? Third number? 121 to 200. Once, well done. 121 to 200. It says here to 200. Well done. I like that person who said that. Are you? Very well done. To 200. How much is that? Two. Two sheep. Last and final number. Anybody like to give me? 201. Actually, there's another two numbers. Huh? 201 to what? 300. No. 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 Three nine nine. <coughs> Three sheep. And the last number four hundred. Upwards. One sheep for what? For every hundred. That's how it is. Please write it down. What way are you going to find it? This is the information. Be a little for you to simplify it. So if you don't understand what is being written, you I can't give it numbers like that. Okay. So four hundred upwards for every hundred. So I've got three hundred and ninety-nine. I've got what to pay? Three sheep. Three hundred? Three sheep. Two hundred and fifty? Three sheep. Two hundred and one? Three sheep. Two hundred and one, look, three sheep. Two hundred? Two sheep. Two sheep. Yes? Four hundred? Four sheep. Four hundred and one? 499? Four, four sheep. 500? Five, five, five sheep. Do you understand that now? Ah, khabar. Tawban, talha. Yeah? I've got 650 sheep. Yeah, talha. How much sheep? is that guy going to take from me? 650 sheep. Very simple. Six sheep. Correct. I'm going to take six sheep. Well done. 656. For every hundred is hundred. One sheep. Is that understood, everybody? Yeah. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Let's go now to the following. Read. Prerequisites for the obligation. I'm going to. Shall I take it out? Yeah. Yes? Go on. Prerequisites for the obligation of the town life law. Number one, uh, possessing the Nisab. This is obvious from the preceding hadith. What? Number two, that they be in the possession of the person for one for one year. Mm -hmm. This is based from the hadith. There is no zakah and wealth until one year passes over it. Number three, that the livestock be freely grazing on pastures as opposed to fodder fed for most of the year. This is based from the hadith mentioned earlier concerning the zakah and a freely grazing herd of sheep. Is between 40 and 120 sheep, one sheep is required as a cow. And concerning freely raised camels, for every 40, one should give a young sheep camel. Right. This is uh, something I don't know if it's been mistranslated. The third one, that is to be sa'ina, meaning that like she is not being fed, it's been grazing the lamb most of the year. Does it say most of the year? Yeah. Yeah, yeah most of the year, yes. 
So most of the year. So if it's been most of the year not being fed, you're not buying food for it. It's just grazing by itself on the land. You're not feeding it yourself. It's grazing by itself most of the year. Then there is zakah on it. Otherwise, there is no zakah. So if you are looking after the sheep and paying food for it most of the year, there's no zakah on it. And the condition as well is to be for one year. The last condition is the nisab, which is mean that if you don't have the right number, so if it's, for example, you have 39 sheep, there is no sheep to pay. Yes? Off your head, what is the maximum number of cows off your head, don't look at your nose, that if you have it, you're not going to have any zakat to be paid. Maximum number. Cows, huh? 29. Do you understand that? So if you have 29 cows, there's no zakat. Off your head, what is the maximum camels? Off your head, not off the pocket. Five. What is the minimum, the maximum number of camels? Four. Four. Carrot. And up of the sheep, maximum number? Thirty-nine. Well done. Is that understood? Okay, so this is are the three conditions. Anybody would like to understand anything from those conditions? I said the maximum number that you can have where there's no zakat. From the sheep, we said 39. From the cows, 29. And from the camels, is four. Does that everybody understand that? And it has to be for one year, and the year here, Islamically. It's the lunar system, not the solar system. Do you understand that? One year from Ramadan to Ramadan, for example. But what is not to be taken from the zakat? You know, uh, what is not to be taken from the zakat? Ibn Abbas, for the Allah, right? Said when the Messenger of Allah, to the Allah, Alaihi Wasallam, sent Mu'ad to him and he told him, avoid taking the best of their wealth. And it's narrated that Abu Bakr, Rabbi Allah, wrote him concerning the obligatory zakat that Allah obligated upon his Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He stated, neither an old or a blemished animal or a male goat may be taken in zakat unless the zakat collector accepts it. Right, what does that mean? I've got now 40 sheep. How many sheep should I give? One. This guy was kept in the zakah. What are you not supposed to take? The best of them. The best of them, the most fattiest, and the one with the horns and all of that. And also, he's not supposed to take the what? The worst. And the one who's to be nothing, you know. And that's where uh, 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 we call it the bribes play, play a big role there. The one. We'll go and collect the zakat. You might find the owners and the landlords <coughs> of, for example, sheep and cows and all they start giving him gifts. Why is the gifts? To take the worst. To take the worst of the zakat. So if it's, for example, let's say it's 400 sheep, how many sheep should be paid? Four. Four sheep. So if he's been giving him sort of gifts, that collector will collect what? The weakest of the sheep. Which is the one that nobody would buy. Them. Okay? You don't give him, you start giving, you take him up the best to, to punish you, basically. Why don't you give him? And that's why the zakah is very important, and the Prophet are prohibited for any person who collects the zakah to take the best. And also prohibited to take a bribe. <coughs> one day the Prophet will send a person who takes the zakah, he brought the zakah. And he started to say, this is for you, and this is for me being given. This is for you, and this is giving up for me. This is for you, and it's being given for me. So the Prophet of Allah left him, and then he went into the pulpit, and he gathered the Sahaba. So why is it we send somebody to collect zakat, and then he starts saying, this is for me, and this is for you? Well, let him stay at home and see if somebody going to give him a gift. Is anybody going to give him a gift? Why you give him a gift? Because he collects zakat. So let him stay at home and see if the people are going to give him, this is for me and this is for you. They'll give him nothing. They only gave you because you collect the zakat and basically decide to keep a closed eye, not to take the best, take the worst. That's what it means. But, carry on, continue. Now please, the next one is very important. This is only a few lines, but a lot of words explained. Go on. Co-earned wealth. Huh? Co-earned wealth. I don't understand that. You're just saying like this. Co, co, co-owned. Co-owned. Do you understand that? Co-owned. Yeah. Business people. 
was Colombia. Two people. Yes, so it's like merging two people partnership. together. Partnership. Partnership, that's better. Go ahead. A few or more people sharing some wealth upon which the car is due, and it is not possible to distinguish one's wealth from the other, then they are to pay one zakah payment if zakah is obligatory upon them. And as for the Allah narrated that Abu Bakr, for the Allah wrote to him uh, the obligatory zakah that Allah obliged upon his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, saying, Neither should the property of different people be collected so as to make one whole, nor should the whole property be divided for fear of giving more zakah. If property is possessed by two partners, they should pay zakah collectively, and they will be considered as having paid the zakah equally. Fine. This is an important statement here. Let's say that a few two people are owning a bunch of sheep. One, he owns, listen please, 25, <coughs> and the other one owns 15. What's the total now? 14. 14. These 25 and 15 belong to Mr. A and Mr. B, they are together. They are in one land. You can't distinguish which one is which. They are always together, they are the same posture. So, if the zakat collector comes, they're not allowed to say, hang on a second, we've got 25 and 15, in order to what? To, not to avoid paying the one sheep. They're not allowed, because they are together all the time. Okay? And they are on one land, so they have to pay what? One sheep. One sheep. Because 25 plus 15 is 40. Yeah. And we said there's 40 sheep, you pay what? One. one sheep. So they are together, because I have to add them because they are on one land. So it becomes 40 sheep. So I have to pay one sheep as a cat. Everybody in the cell, I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. How is one sheep? Well, one of them owns 25, and one owns 15. I mean, if you pay one sheep, it's not going to be fair as well to one of them because one. He's not going to be paying as much as the one. The other one. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So we say here is a ratio between 25 and 15. So let's say that the sheep is going to be slaughtered. This is going to be taken as well as I can. So this sheep costs a hundred pounds. Okay. Now this hundred pounds is gone away from their money, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But the one who owns more. He is supposed to be paying more of that. Do you understand me? Yes. Okay, so it's like he's got more shares into the hundred than the one who's got the hundred, uh, the fifteen. So can anybody now work out a mathematical sort of thing to pay how much should the twenty-five sheep give money from the hundred pounds was worth to the one who owns fifteen? Or how much is the one who owns 15 takes away from the 25? Do you understand know what I'm saying? Yes. Or you don't understand? No. It's 15%. I know. 10%. 15% for every part. It's 62. So 25 meters. Uh, it's 62 times 14. So um, that's the only way you can do it. Huh? Give one? Two times by a. Uh, uh, so the total is 100. Please understand. The, the, the one that owns 25 sheep uh, pays 62 pounds 50. 60 pounds 50 to the 125p sheep. And he, the other guy would pay uh, 30. How do you pay? What do you mean he's going to receive and they pay as well? So how much? So what he's saying, I don't know what he said. Oh, he's basically, he doesn't know. I want to know how much should he give this one? How much is this person going to give that one? About 40. 40? Yeah, 40 pounds. Yeah. So what do you think? Yeah. Okay. See, this person, he should be paying 25 yeah. over 40 multiplied by 100. Do you understand that? That's 62. Which is, he said, 62. Yeah. Another person should be paying 15 over 40 multiplied by 100. Mm -hmm. How much is that? How much is that, Yahmi? Yeah, That's th you should, you should, you should, you should, you're thirty-eight. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thirty-eight. Well, would be thirty-seven fifty. 
Well, let's put it 38. 38 and 62. So this person, okay, they have to be now the same. So what they should do now? This one of 62, he has to go exactly like the 38. Should do what now? The What's the difference here actually between 32? Never no, mind, it's just 62 minus 38. How much is that, guys? Come on, guys. 40, 24. Yes? 24 pounds is the difference. If you pay 24, the other guys pay more. No, no, no. This 24, no. We're going to make it the same. If you pay 24 pounds, it's going to be 62. No, we don't want to do it. We're going to be weighing 12. Yeah, 12. Then you do so divided by 2, and then you give to that person. How much is that you're going to give him? 12 pounds. Do you understand that? So if you give him 12 pounds, he'll be paying how much? 50. 50. And he'll be paying how much? 50. Is that understood, everybody? Yeah. No. I've got somebody with a pencil there. They're looking at me. Right. This person owns 25 sheep, and this person owns 15 sheep. Yes? They are together, they can't separate because one left. So that tax collector came, they can't say to them, oh, hang on a second, we are separate. They're not separate. Why they say they're separate? Because if they're separate, nobody will pay what? Zakat. Because Zakat, the minimum is 40. Yes? Yeah. To pay Zakat. Correct? So, because they have 40 together, he's going to take one sheep. If he takes one sheep, it's not going to be fair that sheep to be taken. Because it's nobody, they can't distinguish which sheep is this. It's not going to be fair that this person will pay as much as that person. Because this person owes less. He owes 15 and this one owes 25. So what is the percentage going to be? That is 25 over 40. That's what he had paid from the sheep. Which is this number. And this one 15 over 40. That's it. He paid that number. So he's supposed to be paid that much. Sorry. He, has he paid this much. And he paid. So to make them fair. You have to pay, you take them fair. We have to divide that for 24. The difference between two. And that makes it 50 and 50 pounds. So this guy will return back to this guy by 12 pounds. Because he owns more sheep. Okay? So if I give you, for example, a better, um, let's say, a better, let's say here, okay, 20 and 20. Then it will be one sheep, and they are exactly the same, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So that sheep will be divided into two, so nobody will pay to the other. Do you understand that? But if it's 10 and 30, so one will be paying 10 over 40. How much is that? 25. 10 over 40 multiplied by 125. It's a quarter of 100. Is that understood? Okay. And the other one is going to be paying what? 30 over 40 multiplied by 100. And that is? 75. <coughs> 75. So, how much this one should be given to this one to be equal? 25 pounds. If you give him 25, it becomes 50, it becomes 50. Do you understand me? So, this guy who owns 30 sheep, he has to pay to the one who owns 10 sheep 25 pounds. So, he'll be paying, do you understand me? He'll be paying 50. And this guy will be paying, for, do you understand that? Oh, you don't understand it, yes? Uh, Chef, what you should do is so that the sheep's divided to eight pieces and each piece is. Yeah, well, well whatever. So, yeah. Okay? He should be paid 25. Okay? Finish okay. Now. If they buy a sheep and, like, pay. And then give whatever. It to if you want to buy a sheep, but they, they said they're taking a sheep from there. You can't buy a sheep and give it to the man. You can't buy a sheep. And give it. But they could buy an extra sheep later on when the man takes it and divide it in this way. No problem. But this is the ratio. Right, now the other way around, which is that we want to separate between two. One person has got 40 sheep, and the other person has got a 80 sheep. They are okay, separate from each other. They are separate. How many they should be each paying the cat? They're separate. Huh? One each. One each. Correct. This is one sheep, one sheep. 
You remember? From 40 to 120 is one sheep. You remember that? Yeah. So one sheep, one sheep. This guy who's taking the zakah, he said, hang on a second, you are close from each other, and plus you can't distinguish the sheep, I'm going to put you together. And let's say that's not 40, I'm going to make it 41. 41. <laughs> so, hang on a second, you are, I'm going to combine you together. How many sheep will they be paying? Two. 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 One. 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 Hang on. Forty. Yeah, this is hundred. Forty. So for the hundred, one should hundred. Yeah, let let no. This one twenty. Yeah, that's forty. Let's say forty, forty. Sorry. So if they are together, if they are together, they're going to be paying with what? One sheep. But if they're separate, one So that's two sheep, isn't it? Yes. So if they are together, they were grazing together. This guy he said to him, no, 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 I'm going to separate you. He's going to what? Do zulm on them because he's going to take a sheep from him and a sheep from him. But if they are together, they're together. If they're separate from each other, they can't come the person who collects and say, oh, we are together. If the person comes and says, oh, no, we are together, but they're not together. But actually, they are separate from one another. Because if they're separate, this one will pay a sheep, they will pay a sheep. But if they're together, they'll pay both of them what? One. Which is not right. So don't combine and don't. So if they are together, how many sheep they will pay? One. 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 This one, in the ratio that we said before. 80 to 40 from the 40. Is that okay? Exactly. This one will pay to that one. 20. Yes. We'll pay to him 20. the money. Whatever. How much is a sheep? We said 100 pounds. I don't know how much is a sheep. <laughs> could be 100 pounds. could be 200 pounds. I don't know. Depends on the market. But you're going to do like this. 80 over 40 multiplied by the price of the sheep. And the other one is 40 divided by 40 multiplied by and that is the price of the sheep. Okay? I get the difference divided by two and added to that. Right. Anybody want to ask a question? Go to the following topic. Yeah, sorry, one question. You know about the grazing, yeah? So what happens if you're spending grazing and spending money? You still pay money on it? I said, if it's most of the year, you're grazing, you pay the cow. If it's most of the year, you're not grazing, you're feeding, there's no zakat. Most of the year. All right? No. Hold on. Zakat on buried treasures. Huh? Zakat on buried treasures. Buried treasures, yes. Buried treasures are those buried in peace amount of times, which are discovered without expending much work or effort. One must pay zakat immediately upon them, without the prerequisite of it being in one's possession for a year, or increasing the level of itself. This point is based on the generality of the Prophet Sallallahu statement. One fifth is to be paid as a car upon found upon found buried treasures. Well, we need to add to this. What is Arabic cast? He said buried treasure. Any buried treasure? Like for example, let's say a generation before us had buried some treasures somewhere in here in this country, and I discovered it. I have to pay the car one fifth straight away on that. No, this is the treasure that been buried before Islam. So I write that down, please. Only the treasure which has been buried before is left. Any treasure has been buried now these days, if you find it, that's yours. Okay. And if you kept it for one year, it's the same gold, then you pay the cow. But this buried treasure, which is from the Jahiliyyah, from the before Islam, and then you pay strictly with student, you find it how much? One fifth. That's a lot of money. One fifth of it. So one fifth on the treasure which is being buried by the pre-Muslims, pre-Islamic dates. Now, no. If you find treasure, gold, wherever, if you kept it for one year, and it's over the Nisab, the threshold, then you pay Zakat. Okay? Otherwise, there is no such thing as gold one-fifth. Now we come to the Zakat, Masarif, meaning where to spend the Zakat, where to give the Zakat. Now, the recipients of Zakat. Recipients of the Zakat. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Inna masadaqatu. Yalla. Inna masadaqatu bil fuqara'i wal masakin. No, no, I, I'm going to use Inna masadaqatu. Translate. The arms are only. The arms means the sadaqat, the, the zakat. Bil fuqara'i. For the poor. Wal masakin. The needy. I don't know. Do you understand the difference between poor and needy? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Poor and needy is a poor. Poor is an arms. We're going to understand now in English. Well, I mean, I mean, 
those employed to collect the funds? Collect, collect the, so employed, that means the one with, with the government, you know, employing to collect the zakat. And to attract the hearts of those who have been inclined to attract the hearts or soften the hearts, correct? And to free the captives. And for those in debt. And for Allah's cause. Here, Allah's cause, we're going to understand what is Allah's cause here. And for the wayfarer. The duty imposed by Allah. And Allah is all well now all wise. Let's see what Ibn Kathir said. In his commentary to this verse, Ibn Kathir said, When Allah mentioned the, object, uh, the objection of the Prophet made by the ignorant hypocrites and their ridiculing of him to respect the division of their charity, Allah made it clear that he was the one who establishes he, who established these categories and rulings. He, he did not leave the categories to anyone other than him. So Allah is the one who had pointed out the categories of recipients of the zakah. Okay, go ahead. Is it obligatory to give to all of the categories of people mentioned in the Is it obligatory to have to give, for example, about zakah? Do I have to give all these eight categories there? Why don't you just give to one of them or two of them? Go ahead. Ibn Kathir stated, the scholars differ concerning these eight categories of people. Is it obligatory to give to all the categories, or can one give only to those feasible? One view is that it is obligatory to give to all. This is the view of the Shafi'i and a number of scholars. The second opinion is that it is not obligatory to give to all the categories. In fact, according to this view, it is permissible to give all of it just to one category. Or to just one category all the arms, even though there were other categories are present. This that means to give it to the poor, all of it, even though there is somebody who's in debt. Or that means that a slave. You could give it to the poor only all they need. Now. This is the view of Malik and a number of early and late scholars, including Rama, Awaifa, Ibn Abbas, Abu Al Ali or Sayyid ibn Jubayr or Mimun al Ibn Jalil he says Ibn Jalil said and this is the view of the majority of the scholars. In this case, the mentioning of these categories is in order to explain who should receive the zakah, but does not mean to imply that all of them must be given. Which one is easier of the two opinions? To give all of them, that you will must, or to give one of them, it doesn't matter. To give one is the easiest. If I'm going to have zakah, and on a condition upon me to look for the eight categories, I'm going to spend another year just to look for the eight categories. Just another year just to look where they can. It's impossible. So, any category that you want to give, it doesn't matter. You can give it to two categories, to one category, to all of them. It's an open, and that's the correct opinion. Okay, now let's say regarding the, the category itself, is category number one. Number one, the poor. The poor, Al Fuqara. Go on. Ibn Amr narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu said, Charity is not permissible for a person's wealth, for a person of sound limbs and strength. Obey the law, even Adi Yul Khiyah. Now, they are narrated, three men informed me that they went to the Prophet during the farewell pilgrimage while he was distributing charity and asked him for some. He looked at them up and down and found them to be strong. He then said, If you two wish, I will give you. But there is no share in it for a rich man or one strong and able to earn a living. Basically, the two men, mashallah, strong as a uh, body and all that, came to the Prophet of Allah when he's giving distributing the zakah. So he looked at them and like that, like this. Uh, from down to up, mashallah. <laughs> from down to up, like this. Yeah. Strong and everything. What are you doing here? What's the cat? <laughs> so I could give you the cat, but it's only feasible, only permissible to those people who cannot and their living. Okay, if you if you think that you are entitled for it, go ahead. But he's looking at them. But why, why should you stay at home and do nothing? We'll give you the cat now. We should tell them, well, get your money. 
And that's as well another thing for those people who are on the doll. What do you mean the doll? Then? On the doll means you are a doll. Or doll. Hmm. Or any part of this. They're doll, doll. <laughs> you can earn your dignity and you're not staying. Better for me not to go to work. So you have to go to work. Get your earnings. Instead of going to the socials and start putting your hands and they might give you, they might give you, sending you letters in the post, the brown envelopes, you can have a heart attack. <laughs> True or not? They cut off my, I'd say they're finished. I'm over, being overpaid. Huh? Yeah, it depends on yourself. That's, uh, okay, number two. Number two, the needy. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the needy person is not the one who goes around to the people and is dispensed with by a morsel or two of food for one or two days. They asked, who then is the needy? The message of Allah. He said, he does not find enough to satisfy himself and he is not reckoned as needy so people do not give to him or he does not ask anything of the people. Well, we do have a difference among the scholars regarding the difference between al-faqir wal miskin to be translated as poor and the needy. I don't think in English you'll find, for example, the needy is poor rather than the poor, or the poor is poor rather than the needy. There's no such thing. In Arabic, faqir and miskin, as I said, there's a difference. Who is the poorest? But if the Allah the Almighty started with the faqir, then the faqir is what? Poorer than the miskin. Yes? Somebody sleeping. You okay? No, 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 no. <laughs> right. So the poor, al fakir because mentioned by Allah Azza wa Jal, before the miskin, he's poorer than the miskin. That's number one distinguishing. Number two, the hadith of the Prophet of Allah could be misunderstood here. The poor does not ask, you have to look for it. For the miskin, he might ask, he might not ask. So if he ask, he give him, if you don't ask, then you look and search for him. But the faqir, they are, they don't ask. You think they are rich, because they don't ask, or they are poor. You have to know them. You have to feel them. In Ramadan, in my Umrah, last time when I went this time, I was in the masjid. Can I have told you about this or not? I was sitting in, in, in a corner, and then you start making socialize with some people that read the Quran. One of them is Saudi Arabian, mashallah. And I don't know, he liked me. So he gave me presents of perfume and he gave mashallah, and he's. And uh, we're talking to each other and all of that, and okay. Uh, and suddenly, I saw a person who is, you know, look like a, I don't know, highly or dishdash and all of that. And people going to him, he's actually giving money. Okay, he's giving money. This person. I didn't so, and so many come come to him. I think he's giving a hundred riyals each or fifty riyals each, or whatever. So anyway, I thought, oh, so the people can give zakat. Following day, I came to the same area. This guy said, "Hey, said, waves to me, sit down, come next to me," and he brought me some special food for the start. Suddenly, a person has got the scarf and said, "Look, Saudi Arabian," and he sat in the middle between us. Okay, and he speaks Arabic as well. Okay, and Masha Allah, and I thought he was like. As wealthy as the other one. So I didn't even know it was cool. This is a new one. And between us, mashallah, kept talking and he was talking Quran, talking, alhamdulillah. Then he said, Oh, you are in England. Oh, you're England and all in England. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, anyway, cut the short story. So we talked about wives. So another person says, I've got two wives, or three, or two. And I said, I've got one. <laughs> this one is a new coming here. He said, I, I can't afford except for one. He said that. 
He said that word, I don't know, something told me that this guy is a need. He's not Saudi Arabia. He's from XYZ country. I don't want to call the country, because some of you may be from that country. It's not from Saudi Arabia. It's an Arab. So I took him aside. I said, uh, I just heard that you're not going to afford a second wife. I mean, I'm just asking, please don't get me annoyed or something. Uh, are you entitled for Zakat? Just like that. He was really sort of embarrassed and shy. I said, I haven't worked since, he said, I haven't worked since January. It's about money, four or five months ago. He said, just said that word. So I took from my pocket whatever I can, what I've got, I gave him, and he took it. I will never know that this guy was dressed up like a Saudi Arabia, he's what? He's poor. I will never think like this. But because he gave just one word, he said, I can't afford, except for what? Word. One misses. <laughs> that triggered me just to ask him on his own. So, you think that he's rich? Because he's with, with the guy, and the other guy said that he was rich. He gave me the same perfume, much as how much cost his money. Rude. Okay, but the proper one, the little small ones. But this guy is, you know, subhanAllah. So sometimes you have to search for them. They don't tell you. So if you find something like this genuine and you're giving me money, one day you should be jumping up and down. You transferred your money to your bank account there, up there. You find it there, feed that money. And multiply it with riba, halal riba. Halal uh riba. -huh. The, 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 the miskin, as I said, sometimes he shows, sometimes he doesn't. And he could be as poor as the poor, but the poor always the poorest. Number three. Number three, those employed to collect the funds. They are the collectors and messengers who are deserving. Collect the arms or the funds? Um, yeah, they're just the collectors and messengers. Collectors, yes, okay. They are the collectors and messengers who are deserving of a portion due to their efforts. However, it is not allowed to give them anything if they are the relatives of the Prophet Allah to whom it is not allowed to accept charity. This is confirmed in Sahih Muslim from Abdul Muttalib ibn Rabi'a ibn al Harith that he and Al Fadil ibn al Abbas. Asked the Prophet Allah by Yosemite to employ them in collecting the alms. He told them alms are not permissible for Muhammad or for the family of Muhammad, as they are only the dirt of the people. The dirt of the people it means you know when you give zakah, what do you do? You purify yourself. So that purification, like it's like a, you know, the dirt comes out. Any person who belongs to Muhammad's family, Ali Muhammad. From the lineage of Al Hassan or Al Hussein, the lineage is only from Fatima, by the way. It's nobody else. From the lineage of Fatima, Hassan, so. but also the Hashemite. Or from also his cousin Al Aqil and all of that. They are born from Al Muhammad. You call him Sayyid, maybe in your country. Yeah. Yes. Mm. They call him Ashraf in our country. Ashraf Sharif. Um, these ones are not allowed to take sadaqah, whether it's a sadaqah or zakah. And Prophet of Allah said one day, Hussein taking a date from sadaqah, he just told him off. He does not work, he said, he means what? No good for you. Prophet of Allah found a date while he was going on the road, he said, had it been, and I'm afraid it could be sadaqah or zakah, I would have eaten it. He took a date from the floor, he said, had it been, could be, I'm afraid it could be sadaqah. I would have eaten it. And Salman al Farisi, when he was searching for the deen, if you remember, there's the story, searching for the haq. He's been told by the priest that this prophet, you want to test him, he's got signs. One of them is that he does not eat from the sadaqah or the zakah, he only eats from the gift. And the sign is that the, the this man has got a seed on the back of his. Or the seal of the prophethood. Okay. The third sign that he's going to be migrated to the land of the palm trees. So when the Prophet was migrated to Medina, palm trees. The first sign. Then he collected some things and he said, uh, I saw that you and your companions are very hungry. I gave you some sadaqah. So the Prophet took it from him and he gave his friends. He did not eat. 
himself. He said, oh, this is the second sign. Then one day he was given a, a reminder of the Prophet of Allah. He came from the back trying to spot the seal. The Prophet Allah saw him sneaking from behind. So he lowered his garment for him to walk, to look at it. As soon as he saw the seal, which is like a mole between the shoulders, shoulder blade. So he prostrated to the Prophet Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he told him to come here from the front. Tell him his story. He told him in front of the companions. Tell the companions. This Salman Pharisee signing us the, uh, he had from the signs is that Prophet does not eat from what? Sadaqah. So Same thing from now. So what about the poor? What do they give him? Give him gifts. Or we will uh, designate a salary for them. Tell the signs. If they are poor, give them a salary. There's no such thing. We give them what? Sadaqah. Sorry, go ahead. Mu'allaf of Guru. Number four, those whose hearts have been inclined towards Islam. Some are to be given so that they will accept Islam. For example, Prophet Allah gave Safwan ibn Umayyah to the pursuit and the duty of the Hunayn as he had participated in the battle while he was a polytheist. Safwan said, continue to give. Me until he became the most okay, we'll stop here because this one needs a lot of explanation. Stop here, inshallah. Do you have any questions?